This is Kathy from Gadgets Top 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Monteverde Fire Opal. I'll do a writing sample on 52 GSM paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib. I'll take a look at writing samples that I did on papers of varying quality. I'll compare Fire Opal to one ink from my collection that was similar. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test. Writing with Monteverde Fire Opal was very pleasant using a glass dip pen. The line it put down was very crisp, but also very smooth. The swatch that I made using tweezers was very crisp, and there's quite a range in the color of the swatch, which makes some very nice shading in the writing samples. The drip at the end of the swatch has some nice, subtle sheen. I'm going to begin with a Pilot 78G. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. The legibility of this ink is pretty good in this extra fine nib and compared to other inks in this extra fine nib, this one felt very nice. Next, I'll be writing with another 78G. It has a stainless steel fine nib. Not much wetter, in fact, about the same wetness as the extra fine, and I didn't feel much difference in smoothness, which is a bit unusual. This one was nice, but feels a little dry. Next, I've got a Sailor Pro Color 500. It has a stainless steel fine nib. In the past, I've called this a medium fine nib, which is what the product description said when I bought this, but the side of the nib does say fine. However, it does write a little more like a medium fine. noticeably wetter and there's feedback but it's very pleasant. This is enjoyable to write, write with. Uh, it's not even close to the borderline of being unpleasant. Now this is a pen that I have dropped on the floor nib first and I had to do some repair work on it. I think it is a little bit wider than it was originally but it's a a joy to write with. I'm going to put nice but just because there is a little bit of feedback but it's much nicer I'll put nice exclamation point it's much nicer than the first two due to the wetness. Next I'll be writing with a platinum 3776 it has a 14 karat medium nib About the same amount of wetness as the Sailor Pro Color, and the sa it, it's also enjoyable. It's got just a hint of feedback, but it still feels smooth, and these two are right very similarly. The same amount of enjoyment. This one's a little bit broader because it is a medium. 
but both of them have just the right amount of feedback. Next, I've got a Pilot Metropolitan. It has a stainless steel calligraphy medium nib. Quite a bit drier than the previous two, more like the Pilot, the two previous Pilot nibs. And it was smooth, but a little dry. I, I don't feel the dryness. I can just tell from the way it looks the ink is a little more pale. Next, I've got a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel double broad nib. Nice and wet, puts down a lot of ink, and just glassy smooth. And finally, I've got a Jinhao X750. It has a stainless steel 1.5 stub nib. And just like the broad nib, it's putting down quite a bit of ink and, again, just glassy smooth. While that dries, let's take a look at some of the other writing samples. I was a little concerned when I did the writing sample on Rhodia. The stub nib looked great. My lighting's not the best right now, but you can see there's some nice shading. The ink just looks real rich. But surprisingly, even with all that ink, it felt a little dry, which is very unusual. The Caveco Double Broad, same thing, felt a little dry. At this point, the Metropolitan was no surprise. It was riding dry, and you can see it, as usual, doesn't put down as much ink, and the ink looks a little more pale. I even had to re-dip it. What was unusual was that the nib was squeaking as I wrote. The 3776 had some feedback, and that was no surprise, but it was just on the borderline of feeling too dry, just close enough that it would be okay to use for writing a few little notes, but doing any length of writing might be a little unpleasant. After that, the Sailor Pro Color was just on the other side, a little bit past the level of feedback that I'm willing to tolerate, just barely, so that it wasn't that pleasant. And that was a surprise, because it was putting down quite a bit of ink. And then I was surprised again that the Extra Fine did feel nice. So at that point, I got my 78G with the Fine Nib, and it felt dry. So I was beginning to think, oh, this is just going to be an ink that is just a little unpleasant. It'll be tolerable, but not my favorite to use. So I started writing with it on copy paper. Now this is not my usual 20 pound copy paper. This is probably about 24 pound copy paper. And it was nice. The stub nib was nice and smooth. The double broad was nice and smooth. The Metropolitan wasn't glassy smooth or anything, but it was very nice. So was the 3776 and the Sailor Pro Color. The Pilot Fine Nib was nice and smooth, but the Extra Fine was scratchy. So it was just the reverse of the writing experience on Rhodia paper. I don't know how to explain that. Now, I've been debating whether I want to continue using this thicker copy paper to do writing samples on because most of the writing samples I've done on it don't really bleed through, so it, I didn't feel like it told me much. And after I did this writing sample, I flipped it over and 
this one did bleed through a little bit, which is a bit unusual. The Monteverde Rose Noir was wetter than Fire Opal, but did not bleed through at all. But Fire Opal did bleed through a bit. And usually, in my experience, it's the purple inks that have more of a tendency to bleed through. So I feel like Fire Opal would be one that would bleed through typically non-fountain pen friendly papers. I'll go ahead and show my little writing sample that I do on Leuch term paper. It's just beautiful. I wish I had better lighting at this point. The shading is amazing and there's little, little bits of a halo of sheen. It just looks really good and felt nice. It didn't feel dry on this paper. The only ink that I had that was similar to Fire Opal was Tasha Hokusai Benesucci. And the minute I started writing with this, I knew this was going to be one that was similar. They have that same little, just subtle sheen. See that bit of sheen there? That's the Benesucci. And see it on the swatch there and that little bit of sheen in a wet nib on fountain pen friendly paper shows up on the letters just little bits of halo the only difference between these two it looks like maybe Benesucci is a little bit more red whereas fire opal maybe comes across a little bit more orange. They're both very orange. And maybe you can see here in the swatch, maybe the Tasha ink is a little bit wetter. It's a little, it came off the nib a little bit faster at first and then got kind of wispy. Whereas this one didn't come off the nib quite as fast at the beginning. And you can see in the two dip pens where I write the name of the two inks, I write those with my glass dip pen. The Tasha was a little bit darker, whereas the Fire Opal came off the pen a little bit more controlled, so you get a true sense of the color. And in the writing samples, they look very similar though. This is Rhodia paper, and I did a writing sample with each of the nibs that I did in the previous writing samples. Let it dry for a few minutes, and then I submerged it in water for 10 minutes, and Monteverde Fire Opal is not water resistant at all. Okay, let's check out the writing sample that I did on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. It looks like on the heaviest parts of the swatch and maybe on the scribble that the ink got pretty deep into the paper but didn't come all the way through. And much like the writing sample on the copy paper, well, this did even better than the copy paper because even the extra fine nib was nice. Something about this ink, it just did not agree with my Rhodia paper. After doing several recent tests of Monteverde inks, I was really excited about doing this one. I've been looking forward to writing with Fire Opal for quite a while, and I was a little disappointed at first because the Rhodia writing samples are always the first ones I do. But I'm pleased that it does perform well with my Rhodia paper and my Leuch term paper. So this is a color of ink that I'm very fond of and I'm looking forward to using it. I will probably be using it in my Pro Color just because I haven't used it for a while and 
I'm curious to see if this type of ink develops any of the crust on the nib that inks of this color are prone to doing. So I've seen a little bit of a range in the performance of these Monteverde inks. Monteverde Elephant was pretty wet and I, I think I liked it best in the finer nibs. Monteverde Rose Noir was a little bit drier than that and I feel like it was the most balanced ink. I really liked it in all of the nibs that I tried. And Fire Opal seems like it's a little bit drier and it looks like I'm going to have to be careful which pen and paper combinations I use it with. But it's not super finicky so I do have quite a few options available. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.